Hello everyone, welcome to Blender. Um, Blender is a program that we can use to do a lot of edits to mesh files. Uh, it has a lot of capabilities and it's also free. So thought I'd show you a few things that you can do. So this is what you'll see when you first open up Blender. It gives you a little default shape, which is a cube. So a few things before you start using Blender. It's going to be really, really, really advantageous for you if you have a mouse and that that mouse has a scrolly wheel because we use the scrolly wheel like a third mouse clicker. You hold it down and drag it and you're rotating around in your scene. If you hit shift and you hold the mouse wheel down and you move around, then you're panning around. If you use the left hand clicker on the mouse, that lets you select an object. And then if you use the right hand clicker, that gives you some options for that object. So the first setting that you want to change before you do anything, otherwise you're going to get really annoyed at Blender, is that you want to go into navigation. And Blender will by default have the orbit method set to turntable. And this is going to uh, make Blender act as if your object is on a table. And the way that you want to view it is that you're just walking around that table and viewing it from the sides and above. You want the full 360 degree view. So you want to make sure it's set to trackball. If you don't have a mouse, you can go into key map and set your 3D um, 3D rotation mode to be a key instead. So when you hold down that key, it acts as if um, you're holding down the mouse wheel. So um, this is your rotate view and your pan view um, that are using the middle mouse button. And you can change those. I prefer to not change any default keypad shortcuts just because there are so many. And if you start changing them, you'll end up forgetting what you've changed and um, things will become a lot more time consuming um, when you start changing them around. So we've done those things. Now let's go back into Blender. We want to select our cube and delete it because we want a different, more interesting mesh. I thought that today we would play bit of frog operation. So um, I have a frog here, a frog skeleton, um, and it's got a broken leg. So I'm going to fix fix that up. I'm going to reattach its leg, realign it and clean it up and make it look all nice. So that's going to take a couple of minutes to read that in. So I'm just going to pause the recording while it does that. Okay, so it's loaded in our frog mesh. By default, it's going to center the center of the frog's bounding box to the center of the scene, which is here. And you can see a lovely little frog here and his break in his leg or her, his or her leg is here. So this is the part that we want to fix up. So the first thing that you need to know is that right now you're in object mode. So you can see that up here. So in object mode, you can do a bunch of things to this object as a whole. You can move it around, you can rotate it, scale it. Um, you can do all of those things, but you cannot edit the raw components of the mesh, which is the polygons, the little units that make up the mesh. So to do that, we want to change from object mode to edit mode. So. When we change to edit mode, we can see all of the polygons and all of the vertices. So every mesh is made up of polygons. And each polygon has corners and those corners, you can see the points there, they are the vertices. So most of your editing is going to be adding faces um, and vertices and joining things and filling holes and that kind of thing. 
So right now the whole thing is selected. I'm just going to deselect that um, by using the select box, which I've got selected here. So I can see all of my faces and vertices here. If I switched up here, you can switch between viewing different things. This is edge mode, so each polygon has edges and you can edit those too. Um, I mostly switch between editing vertices and faces. Things are a little bit easier to see when you are just viewing the faces here. So the first thing I want to do to this um, and you don't need to do this, but I thought I'd show you how and also just let you know that Blender is going to work much quicker if you decimate it. Just because every time you make an edit, Blender goes through the entire mesh file, figures out which parts of the mesh it's editing, which parts it's not, and the smaller a mesh is, the faster Blender will be. So I want to select this entire mesh. So I'm just going to use my bounding box and I'm going to select it. But if I do this, I'm going to have a problem because right now my mesh is opaque. I can't see through my polygons and so when I select, it's only going to select what I can see from my point of view. So to change this, um, we use a keyboard shortcut. We hold down the Alt key and we hit the Z key. And that's going to change us into x-ray vision or x-ray mode. So now when I do the same thing, it's going to go all the way through to the other side of that mesh and it's going to select all of those polygons. So now that I've got all my polygons selected, uh, click back to opaque mode just because it will be easier for you to see what's happening. Um, I'm going to decimate this. So I'm going to go up here to Mesh, Clean Up, Decimate Geometry. The other thing I want to point out about Blender um, that's quite handy is that for each of the things that you can do to a mesh, it will underline the keyboard shortcut that you can use for that option. So I've selected Decimate Geometry and there's a little box that comes down here, so you're going to click it. Right now my decimation ratio is at 1, so it's not decimating anything at all. I think I can afford to lose about 50% of these polygons, so I'm just going to put in 0.5 and hit Enter. and That's, that's just going to take a couple of minutes to sort itself out, so I'm just going to pause the recording. So now you can see that it's decimated um, the frog and there's half as many polygons, but it still looks pretty detailed. Um, if I hit the tab key, I can flick back into object mode and just see how much detail I've still got there. Cool. So if I wanted to do this, I'm going to flick back into edit mode now, if I wanted to do this for just a certain part of the mesh. All I would have to do would be to select it. Say I want to do the foot. I select it, use X-ray vision and select it, and then go to mesh, clean up, decimate, and do the same thing. Um, so I've decimated the mesh. Now what I want to do is take this broken leg, this broken part, and I will because I want to be able to rotate this part and move it around while the rest of the mesh stays where it is, I want to separate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, select tool that I have selected. And I'm going to select the polygons on the edge here. And I'm going to go all the way around, select the polygons that are on the edge of the piece that I want to separate. Uh, to add to this selection, I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to keep shift, hold it down while I go around and select all the polygons that I want. Now, if I accidentally select some that I don't want, all I have to do is hold down control and do the same thing, but that will subtract that from your selection. 
So I'm going to select um, all of these polygons around here, um, right on the edge, as best as I can, and I'm going to pause the recording while I do that. Okay, so now I've selected all of the triangles here that I want to be part of this piece as best I can. It can be a little rough because we're going to clean it up later. I'm going to switch back into X-ray mode, so Alt Z, hold down Shift, and select the rest of this leg. Now I'm just in X-ray mode because I want to go all the way through and select the whole thing. You're going to see um, some polygons here. These are inside because I've been selecting polygons from the outside. Um, and I'm just going to select as many of those internal ones as I can. But it doesn't really matter too much if they get left behind. When we rotate it, um, we can just delete those. So that's probably as good as I can do there. Make sure I haven't accidentally selected any other parts of the skeleton. Sometimes that can happen in x-ray vision. Okay, so now um, I'm going to right click, separate, selection. And then you'll see uh, a second material pop up here. So this is our leg. So now when we go back into object mode, we've got two objects. Oops, back in edit mode again. Um, we've got two objects now. So we can select our leg or we can select our skeleton. Now in object mode, this is where we want to grab this leg and try and reset it back into place. So this is the operation part. So I'm selecting the rotate tool here and you'll see a little trackball come up. Now this trackball is what's, what I'm going to use to rotate and you'll see that it automatically sets itself into the center of the frog. And if I use it, it's going to rotate from the center. And I do not want that. So I'm just going to click, uh, hit uh, control Z, that's undo. I'll put it back where it was and I want to move this little circle this little um, red and white circle this is our 3d cursor and we can if we select this button we can move it and what I want to do is move it to where I want my center of rotation to be it's going to take a few goes sometimes to get it to actually stick to the mesh um, but usually yep there we go so that's on there so that's about good if I can get it to rotate from there I'll be happy so uh, I'm gonna go back to rotate I'm gonna hit the period key and then it's give, gonna give me a little pie menu um, it's asking me where I want the pivot point to be so I'm gonna select 3d cursor and now I can rotate, so I can, there's a few options here. I can set the exact plane that I want to rotate on and use the white wheel to go along that exact plane. I can grab the ball and I can freely rotate. Or I can select any of these colored wheels here and these correspond to different axes that I can rotate upon. So I'm just going to try and get this leg at the right angle. Oh no. At the right angle. I usually find it's, it's easy to uh, keep adjusting and keep using the white uh, wheel. So you can do it bit by bit until you think it's in the right place. I don't know about that. Uh, a bit better. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm try and get it to the same level as the other leg. Um, okay, so that looks like it's at about the right angle, but it's still it's in the wrong position. 
So what we can do is select the move tool. And now we can we can either use these little arrows to let us move it along any axis. We can use the little squares here and that will let us move it along the planes of the of any two axes. Or we can just grab the thing and move it to where we want it to be. Alright, let's go see a few stray triangles though. I'm going to clean that up. That will be the next thing we're going to do. So I'm going to move that. That looks like it's in about the right position. I am no frog-like expert, but that looks all right. All right, so now it's in the position that we want it to be in. And we still have a lot of stray triangles here that are bits of bone fragment that got left behind when we moved it or that were floating. So we're just going to start deleting polygons. So I'm going to start with the main skeleton. And I'm just going to switch the leg off. I'm going to rename this. Let's call this leg. Just so we know which material is which. So to rename that, I just double clicked on the name and entered in the new name. I'm going to hit this little eye here and that's going to flick the visibility off for the leg. So now I'll be able to see inside um, and I want to remove sort of this broken chunk here and these um, edge polygons here. So if I hit tab, I can go back into edit mode. Back into edit mode. It's not doing it. Oh, okay. To go into edit mode, you need to have your mesh selected. So select the mesh that you want to edit, go into edit mode. And now um, I want to select faces. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got the face selection on here. Um, and I'm just going to use my selecting tool to select faces. All right, if I want to delete these, all I have to do is right click, delete, or you can hit delete, and it will come up, it'll ask you what exactly you want to delete. So um, usually I'll select faces. If I'm being particularly brutal with deleting, I'll select vertices, because if you select vertices, it's going to delete the faces that you've selected plus the connected faces because it's going to delete any vertices that make up the next faces as well. So I'm just going to select faces just so I'm only going to delete what I've got selected there. And it's just going to delete that, right? So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to delete all the parts that I don't want. And I'm going to pause the recording while I do that. Okay, so you'll see that I've cleaned this up and literally all I've done is just deleted faces. So you can go, you can go a little bit brutal with this. Um, the less complexity that you have around this area, the better, the easier it's gonna be to join it up. So I've tried to delete a lot of it. Um, I do just want to show you, there's a bit of a hole here. I do just want to show you how to fill that hole. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm in my face view, which I am. Select one of those faces on the edge. And then I can go to select, select loops, and select edge loops. So now you'll see that in... This red line here ha, um, indicates that it's selected a loop. So this is a joined loop in the mesh. And now what I'm going to do is just fill that. So I'm going to go up here to face and then fill. So um, Alt F is the keyboard shortcut and it's one that I use quite often. Um, but you can just click it. And Blender is just going to take a couple of seconds to fill that in as best as it can um, based on the surrounding geometry. Um, so that looks 
looks pretty good. So we've just filled that hole. So this looks pretty, pretty clean and ready to be joined up to the other side of the leg. So what I'm going to do now is just um, do that for the other leg, um, for the other side of the leg, sorry. So we're going to go back into object mode. We're going to select the object that we want, which is the other piece, and then back into edit mode. And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to select faces and delete them and just delete as many as we can to get it looking nice and clean and ready to be joined back up again. So I am going to pause the recording while I do this part. So I just selected the parts that I want to delete and I just wanted to show you sort of how brutal you can be when you're selecting it. I've actually gone around the entire edge. Um, oh, there's a part that I missed. Um, so when you delete this, um, it's just going to make it that much easier to join um, these two bone pieces together. So I'm going to delete faces. Okay, I'm going to have a few stray ones here. It's going to actually switch the visibility off and get all of those inside parts selected. So now you can see that I've got that looking pretty clean. Um, switch the other one on. That looks like it can be joined back up again. It's obviously going to be a little bit lumpy, but that's what happens when you break your leg. So now what I want to do is go back into object mode. I want to select both of these objects. So I'm just going to hold down shift and then select them both. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go join or it's control J. So now I've combined them again back into one object. And you might choose to not um, join them back up again because, I mean, you can see that it doesn't, it doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, you can tell that it's broken, but it, at least it's in the right position. So you could leave it like that. Um, but I'm going to join them up. So I'm going to go back into edit mode again. I'm just going to hit the tab key. Okay, now what I want to do is a series of hole filling and building my own polygons. So to build my own polygon, I need some vertices. So I'm going to switch here to um, vertex edit. And to build a polygon, all you need to do is select the vertices that you would like to use for that polygon. So I'm going to build one here, I reckon. So I'm just going to select, and they don't have to be triangles. The polygons can be made up of more than three edges or points, but the more points you add in, the more complex they're going to be and the messier it's going to look. So I'm just going to use four just because that's going to let me close off um, a loop. And all I need to do is select these points and then hit the F key. And that's just going to add a face. You can see it pop up here. Oh, there's my new face. Okay. And then I want to make another one here. I'm going to select my four points again. And hit F. And there's another face. Now what I can do is select a loop. So this uh, is only going to like this loop if these polygons aren't here. So I'm going to just flip back into polygon view and I'm going to delete them and see that you go kind of crazy with just deleting things because less there is to work with, the better this is going to turn out. Okay, 
basically what I'm trying to do is to make an actual hole here because that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the hole filler to do that. So now that I've got a real hole, hopefully, looks like I may have missed some there. Okay. Now that I've got a real hole, I can choose one of these edge polygons and then I can do my um, select loop again. So it selected the loop. Um, if I had have left those polygons in there, it wouldn't have recognized this as an edge. So it wouldn't have selected this loop. So now I'm just going to go Alt F and that's going to fill that in for me. Um, with some kind of geometry that it estimates. It looks a little bit jagged there, but you know, it is a broken leg. You can smooth that over. If you would like, you could, I could have deleted some more polygons there and then that would have filled the hole out to there. Um, it's, it's up to you how neat you want to make it. Um, and so you can go along the entire break and just keep joining it up in that style, in that manner, just using, just building um, individual faces and also filling holes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the entire break and then um, I'll get back to you and I'm going to pause the recording so you don't have to watch me do it. One thing that I thought I'd add, um, I've just been going along filling in holes here. Um, this is going to be easier and be quicker if you decimate just this part where the break is. So to do that, I'm going to go Alt Z. And I'm just going to select this part where the break is. Right. And then I'm just going to mesh, clean up, decimate. And then it's remember the ratio that I used last time and it's just decimated all of that. And I can take it even further. But as you can see, um, the fewer polygons you have, the fewer that you'll have to add. So um, it's gonna, now that's gonna take me half the time to join those two things back up again. So I just thought I'd show you that and I'm gonna continue going around and adding polygons and filling loops. Okay, so I've just been building faces and filling holes until I finally joined this back up. You can still see that it was broken and um, you could delete and fill and delete and fill more if you wanted to make that look smoother. But I think that looks not too bad, actually. Um, so that's our, that's our frog operation. Um, so if we go back into object mode, we can save, oops, we can now save our new mesh. So um, this is, oh, it's renamed it to be leg, but it is um, our frog um, operation. So we just want to name it something so that we know that this is the file that's been fixed. Now, if we were partway through this and we wanted to stop what we were doing, close Blender down and come back to it, we can save it as a Blender project. So we would go save and then we can save it. I'm just going to save it in this same fo folder and you want to give the project a name um, so that you know what it is. You would save your Blender file and then um, when you open that project, it's just going to open it exactly where you left off. We want an SDL or an OBJ that we can then export out of Blender and use for other things. So um, what I want to do is go to File, Export. Um, let's say I want an OBJ. So 
the one main thing that you want, and especially when you have multiple meshes in a single scene, is you want to tick this box here. So um, that's going to save only the object that you have selected. For this, it doesn't really matter because we only have one object, but um, just know that if you want to save um, single meshes out of one larger scene, you need to tick this box. But we can um, give, save our OBJ in here. So Blender can take a little while um, to write OBJs. You know that it's writing because you can actually see it's got some little numbers that come up there. Um, so that's just going to take a couple of minutes. And I guess that's um, Operation Frog done. Um, if anyone has any requests for any other things they'd like to learn in Blender, um, let me know um, because, yeah, I can film more videos like this. Um, and now that we've saved our mesh, we can export it into Sketchfab or MeshLab or you know, landmarking software or whatever we want to use it for. Um, and I will catch you on the flip side.